So in the last video, we modified our Tomcat image so that those really useless default Tomcat applications, such as the welcome page and those docs, have been removed from our image. And we're getting very close now. Once we've removed, once we've removed the contents of web apps, we need to send our WAR file across to Tomcat. You've seen how to do that from previously. We just use the copy command. And as I mentioned, the copy command for the source file will work relative to where the Docker file is. So for us, that's going to be dot forward slash target. And the name of the war file that's been generated by Maven is fleetman dash web app. Of course, I could alter this dash naught dot naught dot one because I'm still working with the default Maven settings dash snapshot dot war as before the second parameter is the destination so i need to send this to slash usr slash local slash tomcat i didn't need to include that because it is the working directory but again i'll leave it in then forward slash web apps and i want it to become the root application so i'm going to rename this to root capital letters Dot war. So we've now installed our application into this Tomcat. Will it work? Well, we'll recall the image build. Well, for some reason, I have an error in the copy that it's can't, not able to see the war file. And that's, and although we've never seen this folder before, that's going to be the Docker context. That's the thing that's been transferred to the Docker daemon. Hmm, I wonder why that's happened. I could have a typo maybe in my war file. It looks okay. If I do a refresh on the project and check under targets, and yes, it was a typo. For some reason, this Maven build doesn't build Fleetman web app. It just builds Fleetman-0.0.1. So they're the kind of errors that you're going to have when you're building up a, an image, and that's absolutely fine. We'll save that. Try again. Superb. This time the image built. And I'm going to go back now to running this container interactively. Just means I won't need to shut down the container when I'm finished with it. I'll just, just control C will be sufficient. Let's see if this works. Well, this is good. We can see a Spring Boot application going past. Ah, uh, but bad. I can see an exception. If I go up this far, application failed to start. And you may recognize this exception. It's exactly the same exception that we had at the start of this session. It's simply the case that I haven't set the command line argument to tell Spring which profile we're running under. Just a quick reminder that there is a class that provides the stub implementation of that remote microservice, and it's only active when we're running under development or the Docker demo. Now, just to explain what I've done here is I've created under source main resources, I've created a new profile called docker demo i've just set this aside so that we can have a play around in here in future chapters and experiment without damaging the development profile so what that means is we need to run our container using the docker demo how do we do that well back on the command line i'll just control c to kill that process and to stop that container and then switching to the Docker file, I need to pass in an environment variable into the Java runtime, just like we did when we were running manually. Well, I needed to check the Tomcat reference manual to do this. What we need to do to pass in a virtual machine argument into Tomcat is we need to set an environment variable called Java underscore ops. It's just a Tomcat thing. And that's going to be set to the value which is exactly the same value that we supplied in Eclipse earlier. So that's dash capital D spring dot profiles dot active 
equals and well we could go for development or production but as you've seen we have a special one docker dash demo now that's the environment variable that we need to set but in a docker file to set an environment variable you need to do env let's save that docker file and back to the command line let's rerun the image build that's looking good and i'll recall the container run hold your breath Well, this time I didn't see any exceptions and it took about 30 seconds to start up that container. And back into the browser, this is what we had before on localhost. If we reload that page, oh, that's fantastic. That's our image that we've just built, our custom image, and it's running absolutely fine. So that's great. You've got a quite a fairly complex Tomcat application deployed into a container which you could now deploy to really any hardware in the world as long as docker has been installed so that's very powerful but many of you will know if you're working on a spring boot application you don't really need tomcat because tomcat's already built in i must admit that i've i've sort of bent the rules a little bit here to make this into a war file just for illustration in case you're working on a war file so in the next chapter we're going to look at this again, but we're going to look at how you would have done this if it were a regular Spring Boot app. And you're going to see that everything is even simpler than what we have here. So have a good break. I'll see you then.